I'm Debbie Statler, Editor-in-Chief of Provider Magazine. Today I'm here with Melissa Morgan, Clinical Resource Manager of Medline Industries. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Oh, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Well, let's start at the beginning. Tell me about how you got involved in long-term care. Yeah, so my journey to long-term care actually started before I even graduated nursing school. So. While I was putting myself through nursing school, I worked as an EMT. And as you can imagine, in that environment, you see so many different types of healthcare organizations. And it really became clear to me during that time that that was gonna be my calling once I finished. In short-term acute care, you know, you only get a few moments really with that patient. Stabilize them, move them on to the next. And that's rewarding in itself, don't get me wrong. But long-term care, you get to pay, care for the patient for long-term and really celebrate the successes right along with them. And I think the impact that a nurse or really any healthcare professional in long-term care, the impact they can make is just remarkable. Mm -hmm. And with my current role, while I might not be you know, caring for patients directly anymore, the ability that I have to continue to impact clinicians that are through education, clinical solutions, you know, that's such a wider scale now than it ever has been before. So I, I find it very rewarding to remain in that post-acute setting. Long-term care, I just, everyone has that connection, whether it's with clinicians and providers, directly with the patients and the residents. It's just the connection is really the foundation, Absolutely. I feel like. Well, a skin and wound care program is an important strategy in combating injuries. What are the main components of such a program? So when we talk about pressure injury prevention and a solid skin care program, it really needs to take on a full holistic approach. It would be lovely to say it's, it's one piece, you know, one answer and you're good to go. Um, but it's really taking a look at that patient from that bird's eye view mm -hmm. and addressing all of their co conditions and comorbidities to the best of our ability. And in order to do that, it really takes a system of products. And when we're implementing a system of products that are evidence-based, that are proven to drive quality outcomes, we're gonna see that, that pressure injury reduction. And we're looking at product-wise, you know, skincare products, mm -hmm. prophylactic preventative dressings, nutritional supplements, repositioning and offloading devices. So all of those come together to ultimately prevent pressure injuries. When we speak about skincare specifically, it's important that we're taking into consideration skincare products from A to Z. So mm -hmm. daily cleansing, daily moisturization, appropriate barrier products, and utilizing those products at the right time, right frequency, right place. Mm -hmm. It's not just one thing applied everywhere. It really <laughs> is you have to figure out exactly. what the right situation and application absolutely. is. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, how can a skin and wound care program increase positive outcomes and mitigate risk while also providing cost savings? Yeah. <laughs> the important the piece. The important piece of it, yes. So, you know, pressure injury prevention is far less than treatment. And when we talk about pressure injury treatment, it's not just the modalities we have to utilize to treat the pressure injury, but there are several back-end costs that we oftentimes don't really consider, mm -hmm. and that is decreased reimbursement, uh, penalties from regulatory bodies because of increased pressure injury incidents within organizations, and then litigation that could possibly be brought forth yes. um, by family members or the patients themselves. And so like I said, these, thought, these costs aren't always thought of at the forefront, and they really need to be because these scenarios are very prevalent in healthcare, and investing on the forefront is going to ultimately you know, lead to those better outcomes that we're looking for. And so to put it simply, you know, you're not gonna have to pay for something that never happened. Absolutely, prevention is worth it. Prevention is key. <laughs> How does a skin and wound care program tie into quality improvement outcomes? So the, the data on pressure injury rates across the nation is astounding. It, mm -hmm. It's a problem, it's a big problem. And as healthcare leaders, we're constantly asking ourselves, what can we do for our patients that are going to achieve the outcomes that are expected of us? Mm -hmm. And not just what are we gonna do for our patients, because those are our end users, right? But what are we gonna do for the staff? Mm -hmm. You know, what sort of quality improvement can we make to drive these outcomes? And it starts with our frontline clinicians. Mm -hmm. 
And so when we're looking at quality, one of the largest problems we have coming out of the pandemic is staffing. Mm -hmm. We're having to do more with less. So we feel it's really important that we're doing what we can for our staff. What are we doing for them that they can drive these outcomes? And when we talk about identifying issues, you know, looking at our whole practice, identifying gaps, mm -hmm. assessing the staff's knowledge about wound and skin care, mm -hmm. and then basing our education, our solutions off of that. And at Medline, we have several skin health platforms that can offer education, build confidence with staff. I think that's important that they know that they're delivering the best care possible. Mm -hmm. Analyzing data. Um, we utilize, use a lot of data analytics, you know, making sure that our customers have the ability to compare utilization of product and then their outcomes. You know, are they, are they seeing what they expected to achieve? Mm -hmm. um, so all of that ties into quality and quality improvement processes, evaluating, again, you know, knowledge gaps, educating our staff, empowering our staff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, you said the magic word, data. You know, it's important to see where you are, what you need to do to address some gaps. Yes. And then are you making that difference in the data like you needed to? Yes. Well, Medline Industries has long been a partner of the American Healthcare Association. So what makes that partnership so valuable to Medline? So Medline, we've, we've been partnered with uh, ACA for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. And we pride ourselves at Medline, you know, yes, we're a manufacturer of product, yes, we're a distributor of product, and we do those things and we do them well. But what we really pride ourselves in is partnering. Mm -hmm. And being here, you know, at the Quality Summit, as well as, you know, the congressional hearings that we attend to advocate for healthcare providers um, and the national conference, this gives us an opportunity to network mm -hmm. and find out firsthand, you know, what challenges are these organizations up against? Mm -hmm. How can we help create better solutions to serve the needs of the organization mm -hmm. at, the, at the moment, right? We don't want to guess. We, don't, we, we want to find out directly from them. So this, this partnership really gives us the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And education. I know that Medline frequently presents sessions on important topics. And Tomorrow being one of those topics. <laughs> well, we value that. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeping our members up to date on the latest topics is always important. Yeah. Well, Melissa, thank you for spending a few minutes with us today. Thanks for having it. me. I really appreciate it.